from historic Cambridge, England, the world-renowned King's College Choir. Join us for a special presentation of Carols from Kings. Carols from Kings is brought to you by Honeywell with best wishes for a happy holiday season and a world of peace in the new year. Cambridge is a city rich with tradition, filled with visions from the past. Its famed colleges and ancient churches date back to the Middle Ages, when worship and learning were inseparable. It was in 1441 that the pious but ill-fated King Henry VI chose Cambridge as the site for a royal college, the King's College, with a magnificent chapel as its centerpiece. He said that the chapel should house a 30-voice choir of men and boys never imagining that one day this choir would be heard by millions in their annual festival of nine lessons and carols. What started as a simple Christmas Eve service 70 years ago has now become a beloved holiday tradition, celebrated in the clear sound of the boys' voices ringing high in the historic chapel. I think the particular feature of boys' voices that the English cathedral tradition has emphasised is the purity of head voice sounds. And there's no question, of course, that this sounds wonderful in such an acoustic, when it's enhanced by such an acoustic as we have in, in the chapel here. There has been little change in the structure of the choir since the 16th century. It consists of 16 boys, known as choristers, and 14 young men, known as choral scholars. But the lifestyle, particularly of the younger choristers, has changed considerably since the time of Henry VI. For example, the boys are now educated at a, at a civilized school, whereas in his day it was envisaged that the organists and master of the choristers would uh, teach them a bit of Latin and reading and writing and so on, and they earned their keep by waiting on the fellows in hall at dinner. The young choristers still wear their traditional top hats and capes as they march in an orderly formation called a crocodile from their school to the chapel, where they rehearse and perform up to 30 hours each week. Well, you get used to it, but when you first get into the choir and are just a chorister, um, it's quite hard. You get quite tired when you start off, but it's still worth it, what you're doing here. When you walk down to chapel, you sort of have pride in your heart and you oh, sort of um, shame that you're a king's chorister. <laughs> Henry VI did not live to see the chapel completed, for its construction took nearly a century. It was finished in the reign of Henry VIII who inspired the arching, fan-vaulted ceiling and commissioned the artists who created the brilliant stained-glass windows. Henry VIII wanted very much to be an international monarch, uh, not to be a provincial monarch. So this glass is not by English, but by Flemish craftsmen. Um, and it is done in Renaissance style, the style that descends from Michelangelo. And by ex lots of strokes of good luck, it remains complete. On Christmas Eve, the ancient stories told in the stained glass, the grandeur of the towering architecture, and the renewal of a musical tradition that is centuries old all combined to celebrate the birth of Christ. The Christmas Eve service certainly is special. One reason is that it is broadcast all around the world, and so the sense of human family 
is very, very strong, unusually strong on Christmas Eve. The message is that all our ideals, all our thoughts about God, all focus on a human being, a baby. And now, carols from kings.
the birth of Mary. And looking up to the heaven, Anna espied a nest of sparrows in the laurel tree and made a lamentation within herself, saying, Woe unto me, who begat me, and what womb brought me forth? For I am become a curse before the children of Israel, and I am reproached, and they have mocked me forth out of the temple of the Lord. And behold, an angel of the Lord appeared, saying unto her, Anna, Anna, the Lord hath hearkened unto thy prayer, and thou shalt conceive and bear, and thy seed shall be spoken of in the whole world. And Anna said, As the Lord my God liveth, if I bring forth either male or female, I will bring it for a gift unto the Lord my God, and it shall be ministering unto him all the days of its life. And behold, there came two messengers, saying unto her, Behold, Joachim, thy husband, cometh with his flocks. For an angel of the Lord came down unto him, saying, Joachim, Joachim, the Lord God hath hearkened unto thy prayer. Get thee down hence, for behold, thy wife Anna hath conceived. And behold, Joachim came with his flocks, and Anna stood at the gate, and saw Joachim coming and ran and hung upon his neck, saying, Now know I that the Lord God hath greatly blessed me. For behold, the widow is no more a widow, and she that was childless shall conceive. And her months were fulfilled, and in the ninth month Anna brought forth. And she said unto the midwife, What have I brought forth? And she said, A female. And Anna said, my soul is magnified this day, and she laid herself down. And Anna gave suck to the child, and called her name Mary. Thank you. 
the marriage of Mary and Joseph. And unto the child her months were added, and the child became two years old. And Joachim said, Let us bring her up to the temple of the Lord, that we may pay the promise which we promised, lest the Lord require it of us, and our gift become unacceptable. And Mary was in the temple of the Lord as a dove that is nurtured, and she received food from the hand of an angel. And when she was twelve years old, there was a council of the priests, saying, Behold, Mary has become twelve years old in the temple of the Lord. What then shall we do with her? And the high priest went in unto the Holy of Holies and prayed concerning her. And lo, an angel of the Lord appeared, saying unto him, Zacharias, Zacharias, go forth and assemble them that are widowers of the people, and let them bring every man a rod. And to whomsoever the Lord shall show a sign, his wife shall she be. And Joseph received the last rod. And lo, a dove came forth of the rod, and flew upon the head of Joseph. And the priest said unto Joseph, Unto thee hath it fallen to take the virgin of the Lord, and keep her for thyself. And Joseph said unto Mary, Lo, I have received thee out of the temple of the Lord, and now do I leave thee in my house, and I go away to build my buildings, and I will come again unto thee, and the Lord shall watch over thee. The angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favoured, 
the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem 
because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Mary went out from the cave and went into a stable and put her child in a manger and an ox and an ass worshipped him. Then was fulfilled that which was said through the prophet Isaiah. The ox knows his owner and the ass his mother's crib. Thus the beasts, ox and ass, with him between them, unceasingly worshipped him. Then was fulfilled that which was said through the prophet Habakkuk, between two beasts are you known. And Joseph remained in the same place with Mary for three days.
the shepherds go to the manger. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. Thanks be to God.
The wise men are led by the star to Jesus. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Thanks be to God.
St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. May he, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, grant us the fullness of inward peace and goodwill, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.
Connecticut Public Television's production of a Christmas concert with the U.S. Coast Guard Band comes your way next here on CPTV. So please join us. And remember to stay tuned for Hansel and Gretel on great performances this afternoon at 1.